since I have been in Dade County, I have been allowed Don't to shake leave. your finger at me, young man. Don't shake your finger at me, young man. Bundy's trial, complete with live TV cameras and the defendant acting as his own lawyer, was a national sensation. Finally convicted and sentenced to die, Bundy still refused to accept the blame for his crimes. Because it is not a sentence of me, it is a sentence of someone else who's not standing here today. Ted's a sociopath, an antisocial personality. They have no conscience as, as, as we know it. They truly feel no empathy for other people. They don't understand other people's pain. I was barely out of my teens, still learning about the broadcast news business, working at the then legendary radio station WIOD in Miami. A by the book news director named Chuck Dent made the call. He handed me solo coverage of what was already being considered the trial of the century, the murder case against Theodore Robert Bundy. He was charismatic, intelligent, and for a very short slice of time might have even been able to convince some people he wasn't the shadowy figure that slipped into the Chi Omega sorority house on the Florida State University campus the night of January 14, 1978 who left behind the body of 21-year-old Margaret Bowman, bludgeoned by a piece of oak firewood, and then her final seconds of life extinguished by a nylon stocking around her neck. And the body of 20-year-old Lisa Levy, beaten unconscious, then strangled, sexually assaulted with a hair mist bottle, and bitten by her killer. Two other women survived that 15-minute spree, both left with broken jaws, missing teeth, missing pieces of their lives that would never be made whole. I sat there in the media room at the Dade County Courthouse every day, heard every word of testimony, saw every picture taken to the crime scene, and recall when Judge Edward Coward sentenced Bundy to die with words to the effect, Bundy is a bright young man who would have liked to see practice law in his courtroom, but then again, he went another way. I still have my notes from that trial. I look back on them every now and then. The trial, the pictures, the reality of what this butcher had done, not just to these women, but to their families for the rest of time. It made a lasting impact on me. To this day, it all comes back when we discuss the death penalty. Georgia has executed its only female death row inmate. Kelly Renee Dissenganner was put to death by lethal injection early Wednesday morning. Prison officials say she died within minutes of the injection. Court-ordered execution of Kelly Renee Gissendaner was carried out in accordance with state law. AP reporter Kate Brumbeck was a media witness. She said, God bless you all and I love you, Susan. She was addressing her attorney, Susan Casey, who was among the witnesses. She said, you let my kids know I went out singing Amazing Grace. Gissendaner was convicted of murder in the 1997 killing of her husband. She had conspired with her lover, who stabbed Douglas Gissendaner to death. I'm glad Kelly Gissendaner found God during her time in jail, especially considering that for months she plotted with a lover to butcher her husband, as she drove Gregory Owen to her home, gave him a nightstick and a hunting knife, then went out dancing with girlfriends while Owen tried to make it look like a robbery, slicing into Douglas Gissendaner's neck eight to ten times. And when the good wife came home, she did what any loving spouse in that situation would do, watched as Owen torched Hubby's car to hide the evidence. Because I've seen far too many pictorial and video pieces of evidence in cases such as these, I'm also very happy Kelly Gissendaner got to sing Amazing Grace just before they ended her life. Hopefully she found solace and forgiveness with her God, because heaven knows there will never be solace or laughter from those whose lives were forever destroyed by her murderous, heinous, evil actions. When you have seen the face of evil up close and personal, Ted Bundy, for instance, witnessed how easy it is for them to kill innocents, it is never hard to wish them a really speedy trip to hell, which is hopefully exactly what Kelly Gissendaner got right after singing. That's my opinion, telling it like it is. Rock on, true believers. See you tomorrow, right back here on The Hardline.